Kurdish refugees are again on the road in northern Iraq. This time, they're fleeing Iranian artillery. Along the Iran-Iraq-Kurdish border, more than 30 Iraqi Kurdish villages have been shelled by the Iranians. They destroyed all the houses and killed many people. Three of my children are wounded. Yesterday, they killed two more people. The village of Sunna is silent. The day before, more than 500 shells landed here. Most of Sunna's 1,500 people have now fled. The few who remain want to be ready next time. It's a crime that they are shelling and bombing us. There's nowhere for us and our children to hide. We are only farmers. They've demolished that house. It's completely destroyed. The pillars were blown right out. It's destroyed. A new round of Iranian shelling has begun. In two hours we count 76 explosions. Beneath the gaze of the gunners in the Iranian mountains behind, the poor remain to collect what's left of their homes. The shelling was very intense. My children were all screaming and running around the house. I had to gather them from here and there. I took them to the caves in the mountain. A few miles from the bombing in the Iraqi town of Kaladiza, shell-shocked and injured Kurds are pouring into the hospital. Saddam flattened them last in 1988. Now, the Iranian shelling is a harsh reminder of how vulnerable Iraqi Kurds are. For many years, these people had been forced off their land by the Iraqi government. Now they've managed to return to rebuild their villages, but once again, their houses are being destroyed. Iranian rebels in northern Iraq. Iran says they are the reason she is shelling. The fighters belong to the Kurdish Democratic Party of Iran. They are at war with the Islamic regime next door. They want democracy in Iran and rights for Iranian Kurds. It's because the Iraqi Kurdish authorities leave these fighters free to operate that Iran is so angry. The KDPI have their headquarters in an idyllic mountain range near Bula. The Iranians want Iraqi Kurds to close down these rebel bases. At headquarters, KDPI leaders are debating this latest crisis. The Kurdish victory in northern Iraq has inspired more young Iranians than ever to head for training in Iraqi Kurdistan. But the KDPI believes their growing presence is not the only reason Iran is attacking northern Iraq. The Iranians recently wrote about the situation in Iraqi Kurdistan. They bluntly described it as an Iraqi Israel. They said Iran should cooperate with Iraq, Syria, Turkey and Russia to eliminate it. In a secret mountain location, Peshmerga fighters guard the KDPI's prison. Here we were shown what lengths Iran is prepared to go to to harm the KDPI fighters. Inside, 60 prisoners are all accused of working for the Iranian secret police. They were caught, the KDPI says, while trying to infiltrate the organization. Some of the prisoners were prepared to admit their work. My mission was to join the KDPI and pretend I knew how to cook. Then I was supposed to poison their food. Someone else would bring me the poison. Today, after two mines blew up near the headquarters, they've caught another suspect. Now he faces an uncertain fate and days of interrogation. These are some of the 1,000 recruits the KDPI says it has trained in the last year. Since the Iranians began shelling Iraq, the KDPI has stepped up their training program. They are fearful the Iranians have mounted a campaign which could soon need all the fighters they can get. But from Iraqi Kurds at least, they seem under little pressure to change their tactics.
For centuries, Kurdish nomads have freely crossed the borders which divide them. Their nomadic lifestyle has helped maintain deep Kurdish bonds. And even as many of these Kurds now flee the shelling, their government says it won't bow to Iran's pressure. Obviously, we sympathize with them. We want them to succeed. They are part of our Kurdish nation and have their rights abused. But our help is limited to giving them shelter in our liberated areas. We don't support them more than that. 12,000 feet up in the mountains, a rebel patrol crosses into Iran. It's becoming more and more difficult for the KDPI fighters to move about. For years, these Peshmerga have ruled the mountaintops. Now Iran is determined to divide Iraqi and Iranian Kurds. Every day, Iran seals up another secret crossing point. Until a few weeks ago, the Peshmerga moved freely in these mountains. Now, everywhere they look, Iran seems to be closing in. They show us a military road Iran is spending millions to bulldoze along the rugged border and the military bases that are going up to protect it. But the fighters insist it won't stop their struggle. We're a guerrilla force. It makes no difference to us where we are based. We have wide freedom of movement, so these attacks will not endanger our capabilities. Our Kurds have sympathy with the KDPI, but so far we haven't joined their struggle. They abide by our rules, but if our leaders decide, our Peshmerga are ready to fight anywhere. Iran probably sees more harm in a free Iraqi Kurdish nation than she does in her own opposition. And the support Kurds here offer each other is unlikely to bring the solutions they dream of. Meanwhile, both must closely watch the skies for the next Iranian move. The powerful Iranian military is not likely to have embarked on a half-hearted venture. More attacks are sure to be on the way.